Well, welcome to the Thursday edition of Noah's Window. Good morning. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Mary Alice, you know I love the book of Daniel. Uh, there are 12 chapters in the book of Daniel, and it's an intriguing book because Daniel is a prophet. He's writing about the future, but it's also a book with a lot of stories in it. You know, mm -hmm. we have uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel and Lion's Den. Daniel and Lion's Den, Belshazzar's Feast. And mm -hmm. They're just great stories in the book of Daniel, but so much of it is prophecy. And uh, in the prophets, especially in the major minor, well, I guess in both major minor prophets, you have near-term prophecies mm -hmm. that are going to be fulfilled within the next, so say, a century or so, but then you often have long-term prophecies that prophesy about the last days in which we're living. Daniel has an awful lot to say about our time, and that's what I want to get to eventually. In fact, some of the most descriptive uh, words in the scripture about the Antichrist and the tribulation period are in the book of Daniel. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to go to the last chapter because okay. Daniel is signing off and everything in this chapter is about the time that we're living in and beyond and even the future. I want to pick it up in verse 3 is Daniel is writing. I really think he's writing about people who are going to be in the tribulation period. I think these are the Jewish people that are what the Bible talks about, the 144,000 witnesses mm -hmm. and the great revival that will happen in the tribulation period. But before that, Daniel kind of uh, talks about this era in general. So I think even though specifically this language refers to tribulation believers, I think it also refers to us in our time too. So let me just read verse three. Those who are wise will shine as bright as the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever. That's where I want to go back to. But let me go on into verse four. But you, Daniel, keep this prophecy a secret. Seal up the book until the time of the end. It's that expression, time of the end, that I think is even broader than tribulation period. I think it refers to this era of time. Look at this. When many will rush here and there, and knowledge will increase. Mm. So God is telling Daniel there are going to be two qualities that will define the end time. Number one is travel. You know, even if you were to go back, say, a hundred years, most people never ventured away outside their community. Today, of course, we can be anywhere in the world pretty well within 24 hours. Okay. And tra world tra global travel is just something that's passe. But this second expression, when, when knowledge will increase, I, I was reading on this not too long ago. In 19, when, when 1900 came, knowledge roughly doubled every century. Hmm. So every 100 years, there would be twice as much knowledge as there had been. So I'm sure there were people that when they read this back in Daniel's time, they said, well, knowledge is always increasing. But I want you to hear this. In 1945, knowledge doubled every 25 years. In 1982, knowledge doubled every 12 to 13 months. Wow. And today, there are some who say knowledge doubles every 24 it's hours. It's Google. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, isn't yes, it interesting it is that this prophecy written over 2,500 years ago, mm. God said that what would, what would really identify the last time or would be expansive travel mm -hmm. and the explosion of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So I find it significant that Daniel was talking about our time here. Absolutely. That being said, go back into verse 3. He said, those who are wise will shine as bright as the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever. Mm. Stars tend to shine in darkness. Oh, good point. That's one thing that Daniel knew about. Mm. He and Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, we know them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, mm. but that's their pagan names, the last ones. Their, their Hebrew names were Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. They had to stand mm. in darkness. Mm -hmm. But think about how bright they stood, you know, Absolutely. by contrast, how, how bright they stood. Our culture today is, and I, I don't mean this as slang, I, I mean this literally, it is hell-bent mm -hmm. to put people in ungodliness and disobedience. I mean, we see that, unfortunately, we even see a, con a concerted effort uh, oftentimes in schools today. Mm -hmm. Which is a darkness. Which it's a darkness. Mm -hmm. And so... What we could do, and you've even mentioned this earlier this week on Noah's Window, what we could do if we're not careful is we're, we could just go to pieces with mm -hmm. the darkness. This is our opportunity to shine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I love what the Bible says. And let me read it just one more time because it is so good. Just the exact words here. Those who are wise will shine as bright as the sky. 
and those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever. Mm -hmm. I think we need to hear that. We have the opportunity to stand up for what's right and stand up for what's true and not cave, not fold like cheap suits when the world around us, you know, go goes into their antichrist, you know, mm -hmm. teachings. What do you think about that? Absolutely. And it is it is an opportunity to stand up for what's right. And, um, you know, the one thing Satan wants us to do is run scared. Mm -hmm. uh, but don't we don't want to miss our opportunity. God, you know, my mother used to always emphasize this with me. God chose you to be born at this time in this place to do his will. And, you know, so we don't want to run away from this assignment that we've been given to represent God in this age of darkness. In, in a way, it's an honor. It is. You know, the last couple of decades uh, with the advent of reality television, and I've always said that's uh, the biggest awesome. oxymoron <laughs> of all time, but uh, these shows have become just part of our culture where people can be a star, either by singing or by dancing or just some, and, you know, there, there's, there are these shows that have been on for years where uh, people can, ex they can, the whole world can know about them because of what they do. The truth is all that stuff is so transient. Mm -hmm. You really do have an opportunity to be a star. I mean, That's right. You don't have to win a contest ever. You, know, you don't have to win a contest on television. Mm -hmm. You don't have to outsing or outdance somebody else. All you got to do in these last days is stand for truth mm -hmm. and do your best to encourage and graciously turn many to righteousness. And I just think about those who work in uh, our Kids World program, you know, mm -hmm. and investing in the next generation. Such marvelous. Yeah. John or or just. Christ followers who share their faith, mm -hmm. who, who tell people how they can know Jesus Christ. People, just people who invite others to church. I was going to say the main reason New Spring grows is because friends and relatives are inviting their friends and relatives. You know, I see that every time. We almost, I mean, I, I see it every time we have Watermark Weekend. But I definitely see it in so many of the baptism testimonies where someone is in a very difficult circumstance, very painful circumstance, and someone will have invited them to New Spring. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the stars that the Bible That's is talking right. about that shine so brightly and evidently shine brighter than ever in the last days and continue to shine forever. And, yeah, that's right. Passage, that's right. Forever. So, hey, you can be a star, that's a real right. star, <laughs> a real star. <laughs> and uh, a star in God's sight, which is really and important. that's what really matters. That's what matters. Mary, else, yeah. would you pray for us? Yes, let's pray. Oh, Father, thank you for the opportunity that you've given us to shine bright in this very dark time. And it can feel intimidating sometimes, Father, but please uh, give us courage. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Guide our words and our actions so that we can represent you well. And we're just uh, thankful to be given this privilege to shine for you during these days. I pray for each and every person and each and every family watching or listening today. And whatever their uh, life's journey is for this day, I just pray that that they would know in their heart that their number one assignment is to shine for you in this darkness and give us the courage give us the insight give us the love that it requires to be your representative in this day and time and we're going to give you all the glory and the praise and the honor and thank you for this father and we ask this in jesus name amen amen thank you mary alice and thank you for joining us on noah's window we'll be back tomorrow with the friday edition of noah's window god bless see you soon